Hello, my name is Kevin Ross. I serve with the Ministry of Helping Hands Foreign Missions in the Atlanta, Georgia area in the United States. I'm so excited to be coming to you today via this video and to have this opportunity to share God's Word with you. You know, I have some really amazing, great news for you today. Something that maybe you weren't even expecting. But here's the good news. God has a plan. And you know, as a matter of fact, there has never been a time throughout all of history where God didn't have a plan. You see, one of the things that I realize is that today, in July of the year 2020, as we film this, this video, we are living in unprecedented times, unpredictable times. Everyone I talk to all around the world every day they're just amazed at the chaos that our world is going through right now. This global pandemic, the coronavirus, uh, different things happening around the world. But rest assured, today, God has a plan. None of this took him by surprise. I know for me personally, six months ago, I would have never guessed that the world would be in the condition it's in today. But the great news is that God is still on his throne. His mission is still moving forward, and the church of God, the kingdom, is still being built daily. But here's the, here's the exciting news for me today, and I hope for you today as well, is that God wants to include us in His plan. Even though uh, there's lots of craziness going on, we are still a part of God's plan. His plan is for us and to use us to be a part of His plan. You know, I have a heart and a passion to see the world know Jesus and to make him known. And so many times people call that missions or being a missionary. And so I've come up with a definition that I believe is a good representation of what a Christian missionary should look like, a definition of what it is. It is a follower of Christ that has been called and sent by God for a specific purpose at a specific time for the glory of God to be a blessing to all people. So think about that. In this world that we're living in, people need to be blessed. They need to be encouraged and they need hope and they need peace. And the only place that can come from is from the Lord himself. So let me read that to you again. A follower of Christ, this is a missionary, a follower of Christ that has been called and sent by God for a specific purpose at a specific time, like the times we're living in now, for the glory of God to be a blessing for all peoples of the world. You know, as I study the scriptures, as I look at, um, as I look at my Bible, I think about the Great Commission. You see, many times when people talk about missions and the Great Commission, they talk about one text. They talk about Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, and it's an amazing text. And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven, in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always, even into the ends of the earth. Now this is the vision for God. This is His plan, His mission. But what we also need to realize is that there are not just one Great Commission text, there are actually five Great Commission texts. That's right, not just one, there are five. But really, the whole Bible supports God's mission. We see back in Genesis, it's the introduction to God and His mission. And thankfully, we see in Revelation, we see the exciting conclusion of God's mission where someone from all tribes, all nations, all tongues, or worshiping him around the throne. So we've got the exciting beginning, the exciting ending, and then all the fun details in the middle. And so the Old Testament supports this and sets the stage for the Great Commission. But then Jesus in the Gospels uh, gives us five examples of the Great Commission and, kind of, and what our mission is to be. And so today, I want us to look at those five passages of Scripture. So the first, as I just read, is Matthew 28, 18 through 20. The second is in Mark, Mark 15, 15. The third is in Luke 24, 46 through 47. Then in John chapter 20 and 21, and of course, Acts 1, 8. 
So these are common passages, five truths about the Great Commission. And I've studied them, and I feel like there are four common, common elements to these scriptures. And so I want to talk with us today about these four common elements. The first common element that we must see and we must not forget, especially as we remember the definition that I just read to you, is that we serve ascending God. That's right. Our God, the Heavenly Father, the one who saved us, He is ascending God. That's important for us to know and to understand. Mark 15, 15 says, um, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to all creation. Go is ascending for a specific purpose, and that's, that purpose is the proclamation of the gospel. So throughout Scripture, we see mighty men and women of God that were sent by God for a specific purpose in their generation to make a difference for Him. We see Moses. We see Joseph, Joshua, Ruth. Uh, we see Abram, Abraham. We see Isaiah. We see the apostles in the New Testament. We see Stephen. We see Paul. We see many examples of people who got a glimpse of God and His mission and wanted to be a part of that, and they were compelled to carry forth God's mission. In 2007, I was personally confronted and had the opportunity to meet Dr. Richard and Brenda Kowalski. You know, they are the founders of Helping Hands Foreign Missions. And I was amazed when I met them about their, 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 um, their desire to follow God and their passion to carry His mission forward. I love, I love Dr. Richard. He passed away 10 years ago now. Dr. Brenda still faithfully serves. We have a great relationship. I love her and I have so much respect for them because this is a perfect example of a man and woman in our day that saw God and his vision and committed to follow him no matter what. So they went on a mission trip to Cochabamba, Bolivia. And on that trip, God spoke to them. And after, they, after God spoke to them, he came home, they came home and they sold all of their possessions. They moved to Bolivia, purchased land and built up in, in partnership with Word of Life, built an amazing complex where thousands and thousands of people have heard the gospel. But not only, they didn't stop there. They were going all around the world, taking God's mission all around the world where they end up landing in Uganda, where they built the village of Eden, where today hundreds and hundreds of children are being ministered to in a place of extreme poverty in a remote part of Africa, we see the gospel being taken forth in an amazing way, especially in the area of serving orphans and vulnerable children. You know, the mission of Helping Hands Foreign Missions is simply this, to make disciples of Christ by demonstrating His love in practical ways among those with the greatest physical and spiritual needs. So the passion of Helping Hands for Missions is to make disciples, to be sent and to go and send others in the name of Jesus to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that's our heartbeat because we realize, number one, that we serve ascending God. The second thing that we see in these five common passages about the Great Commission, we see that we are to be disciple makers. God's called us to be disciple makers. So we're sent not just to do good works, but number one, to bring God glory, but then to be disciple makers, to take men and women, boys and girls, families and pastors, and to see them grow in the likeness of Christ. See, we are personally called to participate in this proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ. Luke 24, 46 and 47 says it's written that Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. And that is repentance and forgiveness of sins that should be proclaimed in His name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem, beginning at home. You see, discipleship, the discipleship process includes growth for us as a believer, producing spiritual fruit. That spiritual fruit is teaching others to observe the commandments of God. That's what we should be doing, and that's what we should be investing in others' lives. I'm a graduate of the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago, Illinois. And D.L. Moody was quoted by saying this, and it says, The Bible was not given just for our information, but rather for our transformation. 
God's Word should transform our life and impact this in such a way that we must tell others because we're compelled because of what God's done in our lives. Uh, another pastor in the Atlanta metro area is a pastor by the name of Louis Giglio. He said it this way, God loved you enough to swoop into your story and obliterate your sin by crushing his innocent son, setting you free and redeeming you forever to make an impact. So we must realize that we serve ascending God. We also must realize that we are disciple makers. The third element of the Great Commission that we must see, the common elements in the five passages of the Great Commission is this. The message is for all nations. It's for all nations. It's important for, for us to understand that the gospel is not just for me. It's not just for you or people like us. It's for someone that's from every ethnic group around the world. You see, it's actually a Greek phrase, ta ethne, which means all ethnic groups or all peoples. You know, there's a ministry uh, based here in Atlanta called Global Frontier M Missions, and they give a great definition to what all, pe all peoples means or what a people group is. It's a group of individuals having their own common sense of history, language, beliefs, and identity. You see, just because we're from the same country or the same area doesn't mean that we're all a part of the same people group. We can live in an area where there's many, many people groups. As a matter of fact, I'm in a very diverse uh, part of our, of our world. I'm in a very diverse part of our country. And I'm not far from one of the most ethnically diverse places in the entire world. You see, there are many people groups within just minutes of where I sit today, but also of where you sit today. There are many people around the world that need to hear the gospel, and it's for everyone. You see, we must realize that there are 7.6 billion people living in almost 200 countries, making up 17,000 people groups, and if Revelation is true, and I believe it is, and I believe you, you believe it as well, that there will be representatives from all people groups around the throne of God for all eternity. And we get to be a part of God's mission. So it's important for us to realize this. First of all, we send a serving God. And we are to be disciple makers of all nations. But the fourth common element in the five Great Commission texts is this. The plan, God's mission, is not designed for us to accomplish on our own. We are not able to do this alone. It is only through God's power. You see, God's missional plan was not designed for us to accomplish on our own, but because the task is impossible. There has never been a time in history, listen, there has never been a time in history where we see the call of God without the power in the presence of God. You see, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, this is a wonderful passage of Scripture for us to wind this thing down with today. So Acts 1, 8, it says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. You see... There are many places around the world that the gospel has not yet made it to. But God's desire, His heart, His mission, His plan is to use us to take the gospel. And so it's important for us to remember that. There's a, a Southern Baptist missionary, single lady, that uh, accomplished many great things for the kingdom. Her name was Lottie Moon, and I love this statement from her life. She said, as I wander from village to village, I feel it is no idle fancy that the master walks beside me and I hear his voice saying gently, I am with you always, even to the end. You see, we are, we are the witnesses of Christ and we were called to take his mission forward. You see, it's important for us to realize our role because our first role personally, is to be a disciple. But a healthy disciple reproduces spiritual fruit. It's important for us to realize that the way we help 
the way we are part of God's plan is to be a healthy believer. And when we have a healthy perspective of our relationship with Christ, then we can see another believer know Christ and to make him known. Because if we don't understand what our role is in God's plan and to be on his mission, then we really can't help another believer understand their role and their plan. So let me remind you, we live in unprecedented times, unpredictable times. What happens one day cannot predict what is next the next day. It's, it's really, it's challenging days. It's exhausting. It wears us out. But God's mission is still moving forward. Do you realize, let me remind you, that there has never been a point in all of eternity where God did not have a plan. And his plan today includes me and you. He's revealed his mission to redeem all the peoples of the world from the very beginning of time. The vision was illustrated through Jesus Christ. And we are called and sent by our Heavenly Father with the message of the gospel, the life-changing message of the gospel, to make disciples. Are you willing to join him in this plan? There are four takeaways I want us to close with today. The first thing, if we serve ascending God, then we need to be available. I need to be available, and you need to be available. We need to say, Lord, my yes is on the table. I'll do whatever you want me to do. You know, he may call you to some foreign place, to, a, to the ends of the earth. He may call you to a people group that have never heard the gospel. But he also may call you to your neighbor or call you to a broken person in your community. But we need to be available to whatever God wants us to do. So if we serve ascending God, then we need to make ourselves available. And if I'm a disciple of Christ, am I a healthy disciple? And I'm, am I walking with God? In these difficult times, it's important for us to dig deep in the scriptures and to rely on him. The third thing, the third way we should respond to this message is God's vision is for every person for, from every corner of the globe to hear the gospel. Does your heart resemble God? I need to ask myself that. Does my heart resemble God's heart for every person from every corner of the globe? It should move us to action. It should motivate us with compassion to make a difference. The fourth thing, the fourth way we should respond is I need to make myself available to his plan, but I need to be committed to carry the gospel. It's not just enough to be available, but we must be committed through the difficulties of life, no matter what life brings us, to remain committed to the call. So today, I want to thank you for taking a moment to watch this video. And I also want to pray for us today that we will respond to God's call and that we will be committed to his call. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the powerful message of the gospel. Lord, I pray that it will sink into our lives, motivate us and to be moved with compassion to take your message to a hurting world, to a broken world, your message of redemption, forgiveness of sin, hope, and peace. Lord, I pray that you'll strengthen everyone listening to this message today, including my heart. And may it all be for your glory. It's in your name we pray. Amen.